kwako na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi zangu za urai kwa jamhuri ya Kenya kwa uaminifu ilikuwa wazi kwamba alikuwa kijiza titi kuonyesha bashasha licha ya kukumbwa na maumivu hali hiyo haikumzuia Emilio Mwai Kibaki umri wake wakati huo miaka sabini akiwa amekalia kitiguru kufuatia ajali ya barabarani kula kiapo na kisha kutoa hotuba yenye msisimko akiapa kumaliza uovu wote wa utawala wa Kanu nak ilikuwa inaingia uongozini Kanu ikifunga virago Emilio Mwai Kibaki alikuwa anachukua hatamu za uongozi wa rais wa tatu wa Kenya after trying in 92 and 97 and then also given the fact that uh, he had a serious motor vehicle accident just before the election um, i think uh, watching him at Uhuru Park you know in a wheelchair and his leg in a cast and with a neck brace and all that i think it was you know a moment to save uh, for myself my family and for many kenyans because he was a you know he was the right president at the right time mie nalikuwa nikisema kwamba nikiandika kila mara nikisema kwamba he is a man who never saw a fence he did not want to sit on ni mtu ambaye kila mara hakuwa anataka ibainike wazi wazi kwamba anayegemea upande gani. Imekuwa ni safari ndefu kwa Mwai Kibaki ambaye mwaka wa 74 jarida la watu mashuhuri la Marekani Times Magazine lilimorodhesha kwa mmoja wa watu moja duniani wenye uwezo na kipawa cha uongozi. Mwanauchumi aliyefuzu shahada ya kwanza katika chuo kikuu cha Makerere na ya pili katika chuo kikuu cha London School of Economics. Alijitosa katika ulingo wa siasa mwaka 1960 baada ya kujiuzulu wadhifa wa naibu mhadhiri wa uchumi chuoni Makerere. Kufia kwanza kuivaa kisiasa ilikuwa ni kuhudumu kama afisa mkuu wa Kanu. Aliposhinda kiti cha ubunge cha Donho kabla ya kuguria Uthaya Mwanauchumi huyu akawa amegeuka na kuwa mwanasiasa. Na nyota yake siasani ilipigwa jeki alipoteuliwa kuwa waziri wa biashara na viwanda. Ni enzi yake lakini akiwa waziri wa fedha kazi aliyoshikilia kwa miaka 13 ndio bado hadi leo inampa sifa tele Mwai Kibaki. He does not like the idea of people merely telling him about problems. He would like you to propose solutions which you and him can discuss and the values and advice a wide range of advice from all people kule uingereza kama wewe umepelekwa kwa idara hiyo huwa wanasema kwamba ni political graveyard sababu kuna changa moto nyingi kumbuka kwamba wakati huo vile vile ndio uh, tulikuwa tunasikia kwa mara ya kwanza kuhusu ukimwi na kumbuka vizuri sana maneno ya Kibaki haya mambo ya AIDS watu waache kutanga tanga period Rais mstafu Daniel Moi alimteua makamu wa rais mwaka wa 78 baada ya kifo cha mwanzilishi wa taifa Jomo Kenyatta alikuzwa kisiasa katika enzi za Kenyatta na Moi na haikuwa ajabu bali Mwai Kibaki alipopuuzilia mbali siasa ya vyama vingi kule msemo wake maarufu kwamba kuiondoa kanu madarakani ni kama kujaribu kukata mti wa mgumo kwa wembe ilichukua muda kwa Kibaki kuvalia njuga mchakato wa siasa za vyama vingi Harakati zilipushika kasi miaka ya tisini aliwashangaza wengi alipojiuzulu kanu Disemba 1991 na kujiunga na upinzani. Hata hivyo hakukosa wakusuaji waliomlimbikizia sifa kwamba amevalia kufia ya utetezi wa demokrasia kwa kuchilewa. Ukilinganisha na vinara upinzani wakati huo mfano Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Charles Rubia na Kenneth Matiba. Sisi tunajua tukawa tashira. Wote mmoja tafute haki Kenya mpya imeshajengeka mimi nilikuta uh, rais Kibaki akiwa kwa opposition nilimwangalia mtu nikaona mtu aliye na akili kabisa kabisa alikuwa anaweza kusimama saa mzima 
akisema Kiingereza bila kusita hata kidogo na Kiingereza cha hali ya juu iliyokuwa na maana kibaki ni watu wawili sio mtu mmoja kuna yule kibaki tunamwona yule mzee mpole pale barabarani akizungumza anasema tu mambo hivi na vile aongee vizuri huyo ni kibaki ambaye ni wa television kibaki ambaye ni wa magazeti lakini akitoka pale akiingia pale ndani kibaki anabadilika ile kibaki mwenyewe anajitokeza na kibaki mwenyewe tunaita kwa Kiingereza ni micromanager ni yule very calculating ni yule ambaye hata he will not show his hand ni yule ambaye kadi zake za karata ziko karibu na kifua chake DP ndicho chombo mwa Kibaki alijaribu kuingia nacho ikulu si mara moja bali mara mbili mwaka wa 92 na 97 Mambo no! Haya asante sana Haya asante sana Ukuwa historia ni mwalimu. Upinzani ulikuwa umepata funzo kwamba kuingoa kanu madarakani itabidi waungane. Na Rais Mstafu Daniel Moi akawapiga jeki alipomtunuku chipukizi Uhuru Kinyata, mwana wa Jomo Kinyata, kuwa mrithi wake. Gogo wakano kiongozwa na Raila Odinga walingatuka na kujiunga na Mwai Kibaki Charity Ngilu na mwende zake kijana Mwalwa. Ndoto ya Kibaki ikawa imetimia. Kanu kazi yake kuisha tena imekwisha kabisa. Yaani hakuna mtu sasa a lot of our friends and supporters were you know wondering really is it worth it because it, it, i'm telling you it, it it's quite it's quite a task it's quite a task and um you know um we have done four presidential campaigns and and spent a lot of time and resources on it baada ya uchaguzi wa 2002 Kenya ilipata sifa nzuri sana duniani kote kama inchi ambayo ilikuwa na ma, matarajio makubwa tena mema lakini baada ya mwaka mmoja kama ambavyo umegusia mambo yakaanza kufifia hali ya kutoelewana ikazuka tutamkumbuka kwa njia ambayo sio mzuri kabisa ni mtu ambaye ametuletea shida sana za kisiasa na ni hasa kwa sababu ana haja na siasa ni mwanasiasa maalum lakini inaonekana upande wa siasa mwachana na hiyo shamba amesema hiyo sitalimia au kupalilia chochote chochote ambacho nimepanda pale. Kwa hivyo tamkumbuka kama mtu ambaye li revive economy lakini ambaye li collapse nchi. Na sisi tukiwa watu wa Kenya na tunajivunia Kenya yetu. Bas tuendelee kama kawaida tuchaguane na tutamaliza na tunajua tutashinda Kuna wale wanasema ukurasa wa kwanza wa daftari la shajara ya Mwai Kibaki uliandikwa pale alipozindua elimu ya shule za msingi bila malipo ahadi kuu ya serikali ya NAC Ingawa miaka kumi baadaye mradi huu unawakosoaji kwa Kibaki ili kuufanisi na ilikuwa wazi alipoa kusoa wazazi ambao hakuwapeleka watoto wao shuleni. Na kuna mwenyewe hapa au ni mama au ni baba angali anajivuna kutembea mbele ya watu. Na ana aibu. Mtu kama huyo ni bure kabisa anahitaji kutwagwa makofi. Kibaki being 
the sharp man that he is, the kitchen cabinet vile imekuwa made up of sharp people. They are not people ambao wanatoka pale na kujigamba eh unajua nini wewe wewe unjui mimi mimi nani no Kibaki met his kitchen cabinet he listened to what they had to say and Kibaki made his decision aliwasikiza vile wanavyosema wote na wange alafu amewaambia asanteni uamuzi umekuwa kwa bwana Kibaki utawala wake wa miaka kumi Kenya imeshuhudia ukuaji wa uchumi na kuboreshwa kwa miundo msingi ya hali ya juu. Lakini ni hapa uhuru pasi. Aliposimama wima akiwa na nakala ya katiba mpya mikononi mwake ndilo tukio ambalo mwai kibaki atalieleza. Kama si yeye Hatunga alipata hii katiba alishikilia akatafuta marafiki eh, hata kwa vile ambavyo wengine walikuwa opposition nafikiri katiba ni jambo ambalo alifanya bila eh, eh, tashwishi lakini pia itakuwa ni makosa itakuwa ni kwa kiingereza na hizo structural mistake kwa maana hii katiba ambayo tulipoa ni katiba ambayo ni mbichi Najua kikula kitu ambacho ni mbichi tumbo itaanza kujikoroga yenyewe. Na kama hii tumbo haitajikoroga katika hii uchaguzi itajikoroga tu baadaye. Na hiyo utakumbuka kila wakati tumbo inajikoroga tunasema hai hii katiba mbichi kibaki ndio alijipatia. And this is something my father always told me. You must always keep your focus. People will try and divert your attention to you know sometimes even petty things. But if you, you must um, you must keep your focus. Uh, we golfers we have a saying we say you must keep your eye on the ball because if you're swinging to hit the golf ball and, and you don't keep your eye on the ball you're going to miss that golf ball. Rais wa kwanza wa Kenya Jomo Kenyatta alivishwa vazi la baba wa taifa. Wakati huo Kenya ilikuwa inapigana kufa kupona kujipatia uhuru na Kenyatta ndiye alikuwa sura ya uhuru huo. Daniel Moi pengine huwezi mtenganisha na ile kufia ya profesa wa siasa. Lakini ni mbinu za uongozi za rais wa tatu wa Kenya Mwai Kibaki ndizo zimeibua mijadala chungu nzima. Kuna wale wanasema kwamba Mwai Kibaki aliisimamia Kenya kama vile afisa mkuu mtendaji anavyosimamia kampuni. Ukisubiri Mwai Kibaki aungame na wewe kwa jambo lolote utasubiri sana. Na hata ilipokuwa wazi kwamba atawania mhula wake wa pili, aliyepaswa mbarika si Mwai Kibaki. Kuna wengine wanasema, "He, wanauliza atasimama tena?" Kwa nini hata simama tena? Si miaka ya mtu bunge ni kumi. Ha? Eh? Miaka ya mtu ya rais ni kumi. Basi yeye adari kijana. <laughs> Mimi na watoto wangu watuoni yeye ni mzee. Kibaki the politician hmm? tumeketi na yeye tunamueleza, anasikiza, anasikiza hata sema lolote. Tutakupa uh, example Uh, bwana uh, Dr. Noah Makaranganga wekesa na marehemu George Saitoti Professor wanawania um, chairman wa PNU. Na? Wameenda kwa rais delegation mbili. Ya bwana Kibaki na bwana Noah wekesa. Pande huu unasema mheshimiwa rais tumekuja tungelipenda bwana wekesa awe ndiye uh, kinara wa chama sababu moja mbili tatu kamaliza asikiza kibali hasemi lolote upande wa pili ukaanza rais sisi tumekuja maana yake tunapendelea bwana Saitoti profesa awe kinara rais amewasikiza 
asifu lolote wakaanza tena upande wa wekesa wakarudi upande wa kisha baada wakaenda zao hawakuwa na neno kutoka rais kusema kwamba hey nataka hivi na vile Urais wake hata hivyo umetiwa doa na matukio kadhaa ya kuhuzunisha. Mkenye yote ambaye alikuwa na fahamu zake 2007 daima itasalia katika kumbukumbu pale Kenya ilipotumbukia katika giza la machafuko. Uchaguzi mkuu wa 2007 ukawa na utata. mwai kibaki na hapa kwamba nitatenda kazi zangu za uharifu rais kwa jamhuri ya Kenya Kibaki akaanza awamu yake ya pili uongozini kwa hatua ya kisirani Mimi mwenyewe niliipashwa habari hiyo na nikafuata habari hiyo na ninazidi kufuata sheria vile ilivyo na yeyote ambaye hakutosheka ana haki ya kwenda kotini ndipo mambo ichukuliwe ni kotini na kazi hiyo ifanyike matukio ya wakati huo hadi pale serikali ya muungano ilipoundwa kama angeweza angeyafuta doa katika urais wake lisiloweza kufutika na lazima tukumbuke na tumwangalie tuseme hai alikuwa amelala uzingizi mnono sana huyo mzee kwa maana tulidhania kwamba hiyo vita tutapigana siku ya moyo. Na tuliingojea siku ya moyo, moyo akasema siku zangu hakuna vita. Kwa hivyo moyo tunamkumbuka kama kiongozi ambaye alifanya mambo mingi lakini hakutupeleka vitani. Mambo mingi mbaya. Lakini hakuna vita. Lakini kibaki tutakumbuka mtu ambaye amefanya mambo mingi mzuri sana zaidi lakini akatuletea vita. Kibaki tangu uh, 63 paka wa sasa kibaki ame, hajafanya shughuli nyingine siasa public life yake ni uh, siasa kunyamaza kwake uh, kutoonyesha mkono wake uh, kutotangaza waziwazi vile anavyofikiria sio kwamba kibaki ni weak kumbuka uh, mwaka 2007 december baada ya kura yule mtu yule mtu uliyeona akiapishwa kuwa rais wakati inchi ilikuwa inakaribia kuchomeka huyo ndio rais huyo ndio kibaki alikuwa anasema hivi it's me or nobody kwa sababu alikuwa ametangazwa mshindi ya yeah? wengine wa pengine wa hakukubali mambo hayo kwa sababu hawakuwa na imani kwa mahakama yetu basi ukweli ni kwamba aliapishwa na ndiyo basi mimi kwa pande wangu na chama changu wakati ule tukaona afadhali tuokoe inchi. Wengine wanaliona kama sisi tulikuwa opportunists, tulikuwa nini, lakini sasa wakifikiria vile ambavyo tulifanya kazi hiyo, vile tulifikia uamuzi huo, inchi hii hadi wakati huu kwa maoni yangu ingekuwa katika hali mbaya zaidi kama tungechukua fursa ama nafasi hiyo kudhibiti inchi. Kusema kweli ODM Kenya ilisaidiana na PNU kudhibiti inchi hadi wenzetu kisha baadaye wakaingia kufuatilia mkataba uliongoza uh, bwana Kofi Annan for him personally it was it, it was quite distressing because you know first of all you have the responsibility um, as a president uh, you know to to figure out what's going on and to try and return the situation back to normal as quickly as possible but secondly you know as a, as a, like i say as an as an elderly gentleman a person of a certain age um, it, it was quite distressing ni chini ya utawala wake donda sugu la ufisadi lilizidi kuitingisha Kenya sakata kama ya anglolism ikawa ni tope kwa mwai kibaki ambaye aliingia madarakani na upanga wa kupiga vita ufisadi rais mwenyewe alijitokeza akasema kutoka kutoka leo uh, ufisadi tutatangana na, na ufisadi na itakuisha na mtu yule ataanzisha atakuwa ata kwa mstari wa mbele kungana na ufisadi 
ni mimi kama rais yani alisema hivyo uh, na kweli tukaona uh, akaanzisha tume kama ile ya golden bar nyingine ya mashamba alafu tukaona pesa zingine uh, zinafanya upelelezi na zinarudishwa kwaona watu wakawa na confidence faith well, they believed uh, kwa hivyo ukiangalia miezi ile ya mbele kama sita ya serikali ya NAC ukizunguka jamhuri hii wananchi wenyewe walikuwa wana wana wanashika uh, police kama polisi anauliza hongo unasikia ameshikwa na amefungwa mkana na anapelekwa na, 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 na police station wananchi wa Ghana wanasema samaki ikianza kuoza inaanza kuoza kutoka kichwa kwenda chini na hivyo ndivyo iliendelea hapa saile nafikiri wananchi waliona rais na watu wale wamemzunguka kweli sasa wamepoteza ile hamu walikuwa nayo ya kupigana na fisadi hata wananchi na wenyewe wakawaachilia vita dhidi ya ufisadi sasa ufisadi unajua it takes two to tango tunajua kwamba imekuwa kama culture na mimi nikubali tu niseme mwanira mambo haya yanaelewa sana mimi serikali ijayo iangalie kabisa tuhakishe tunakomesha na mimi nimejitolea vilivyo amekosolewa kwa kuamini wandani wake kutoka eneo lake kushikilia nyadhifa muhimu serikalini wakosoaji wamemlaumu kwa kusaliti ule utaifa uliokuwa uti wa mgongo wa NAC wengi wanasema mbegu ya hisia za ukabila zilipaliliwa hapa na haikuwa ajabu pale mwai Kibaki aliposhtumiwa kwa kukiuka yale makubaliano ya ugavi wa madaraka maarufu kama MOU. Kuna wale lakini wanasema kwamba awamu hii ya Mwai Kibaki ilikuwa ngumu kwa kuwa alikuwa anaugua baada ile ajali mbaya ya barabarani. Hivyo wanani wake waliuteka nyara urais wake. Hili lakini halikuzuia kumea kwa mzizi wa fitina na matokeo yake ilikuwa pigo kubwa kwa Mwai Kibaki 2005 wakati wa rasimu ya katiba. Wandani wake wakageuka na kuwa mwiba kwa utawala wa Mwai Kibaki. Najibu lake akawatimu wa kutoka serikalini. Uwasi huu 2005 ndio unasemekana ulibebwa hadi 2007. Mwaka ambapo Kenya iliingia katika giza kubwa la machafuko. Ile memorandum of understanding ikawa memorandum of misunderstanding. E, sasa shutuma zikaingia hapa na pale wengine sisi tukamini kweli kwamba ni kama mafikira aliyokuwa sawa na bora mheshimiwa rais yalitekwa nyara na wengine ndipo basi mzozo huo huo 2005 inji kagawanyika baina ya ndizi na chungwa basi bala ndio hiyo bala hiyo iliendelea mpaka uchaguzi wa 2007 ukisikia kama ile uchungu tuko nayo poani Uh, hiyo si uchungu ya juzi ni uchungu wa zamani ya mashamba ya title deed watu kunyang'anywa mashamba hiyo ni uchungu umekuwa hapo miaka mingi lakini katika hii hii sera ya kibaki imepinduka ikawa pwani si Kenya tunaona suguta uko uh, waskari yetu wanavamiwa kuna garisa iko vile tunaona uh, kwa hivyo uh, nafikiri rais Kibaki uh, katika kazi ya ku, 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 kuinua uchumi amefanya kazi nzuri lakini kuunganisha watu wa Kenya wakue watu moja watu wanaaminiana wanakubali kukaa kukaa kwa amani pamoja hapo ningesema ameanguka uh, na mtu akiambiwa achague ni gani muhimu barabara haukuli kama hii hawezi kula lakini eh, watu kukua na eh, uhusiano na uhusiano mwema na muungano mzuri hiyo ni kitu ya muhimu sana ni katika urais wa kibaki kenye imekabiliwa na changamoto nyingi za kiusalama ni enzi ya kibaki matukio kama milipuko ya gurunedi tangu Nairobi pwani na mkoa kaskazini mashariki imekuwa kawaida ataingia katika historia kama rais aliyetupeleka vitani Somalia 
kulikomboa taifa hilo kutoka mikononi mwa kundi la kigaidi la alshabab kuna mambo mengi sana especially upande wa kisiasa ambayo imeenda kombo maaskari kuuawa pale na hapa na pale eh unapata wakati mwingine machifu wanaenda kufanya riots hiyo ni mambo ambayo tu ungeweza kuona saa wakati wa moyo allowing people to think freely including asking him questions including going to the extent of criticizing him to an extent where sometimes you think they are insulting him in fact he has got been given so much freedom that sometimes i i i i see to wonder i mean is it not too much alikuwa anataka kuona results lakini hakuwa mtu wa kusindilia mambo kushurutisha mtu ama kuleta hali ya hofu kwa kazi aliyokupatia wewe kama kiongozi fulani ama waziri fulani Baada ya miaka 24 bila ya mama wa taifa ni urais wa Mwai Kibaki Kenya ilimkaribisha mama wa taifa. Sherehe za kitaifa hazingitimia bila ya uwepo wake. Na mama Lucy hakujitenga na masuala ya kitaifa. Watu wanaelekea huku State House ni moja na branch zake Mombasa na kule kwingineko nyinyi mnajua lakini kitada cha rais huku ni kimoja. Na kitada cha first lady ni kimoja. Bali utovu usalama ulikuwa umekithiri sikibaki. Bali ilikuwa mama Lucy aliyemkaribia waziri wa usalama wakati huo mwenda zake George Saitoti. The minister who is there today and I'm going to say Minister Saitoti. He waits until he hears of budgets in northeastern budgets somewhere else and the next day you see him there. The internal security ministry means you protect everybody in Kenya. You stop accidents. I don't tell me that is the job of the minister for transport or for road. Ilikuwa vigumu kwa Mwai Kibaki kujitokeza mzima mzima bali alihisi pengine familia yake inalengwa. Kofia hii ya utetezi aliivalia si mwingine bali mama Lucy. Don't take my picture you. Mane unakuwa na maana gani duniani ikiwa we kazi yako ni wizi wa ngombe kweli una maana gani una maana wewe ni binadamu ya mavi ya kuku hii mvua nitakuwa ni kidogo wewe hapana hata gari yangu naona inatoroka yeye bure mwambie arudi nyuma ni pupafu kabisa na kuna mwenyewe hapa au ni mama au ni baba angali anajivuna kutembea mbele ya watu na ana aibu tu kama huyo ni bure kabisa anahitaji kutoa kwa makofi na usije ukiwa popote ukishakula pombe ukweli ni kwamba hakuna haja wewe kula pombe ate ndio ukandeneme juu ya mtu wako hiyo wacha hiyo wacha na mukule pombe huko mkiwa peke yenu do not be encouraged by these fellows who keep talking loudly for nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
useless type of people who make big noise. If you just hang around and don't register, you are useless. <laughs> no, true. You can't be useful. You can't be any use because you are not participating in the development of Kenya. And if you are hanging around just eating, I mean, surely you can't be very meaningful or useful at all. Sio lazima we kila msiku, kila siku ya pili ya tatu, ati lazima uproduce mtoto. What the hell? Habana. Hiyo ni kukoza adabu. Lakini atakapoka uandika kitabu chake kama alivyoahidi pengine kumbukumbu kumbu kubwa ya mwai Kibaki itakuwa ile sura ambayo wengi hawana ufahamu mzuri nayo na mwai Kibaki kama mume baba na babu Changamoto walizopitia familia yake katika miaka hamsini ya Kibaki siasani na hasa kumi akiwa rais Everyone in Kenya knows it but the media keeps repeating about my having another wife or wives i want to make it very clear that i have only one dear wife lucy when you become what is referred to as a first family of course your whole life changes completely you have increased security your movements are monitored you know these are not things that you you casually get used to and then um, a lot of people seek you out because because of, of who you are you know you're the son of a president after interacting with him you know in a private home here in Mosaiga now we, we visit him at state house uh, of course for him uh, he had to sacrifice a lot of his family time and i know you'd, he'd have wanted to spend more time with his grandchildren when 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 they're growing up in fact every time he sees them he's he's amazed you know how quickly they're growing after 50 more than 50 years of my family being in politics it's it's time to take a break and uh, and concentrate on family issues we're really looking forward to it because you know for the first time you know in my life really i'll have my father all to myself daniel moi Alitia kikomo cha uongozi wake wa miaka 24 kwa kumpendekeza uhuru Kinyata kuwa mrithi wake. Mwekibaki tangu wachukue madaraka miaka kumi iliyopita katika uwanja huu wa Uhuru Park. Alama yake ni pengine kwamba kila baada ya miaka miwili alitupeleka uchaguzini. 2005 kura ya maoni, 2007 uchaguzi mkuu, 2010 kura nyingine ya maoni. Na sasa tunasubiri 2013 uchaguzi mwingine mkuu. Munira Muhammad Kate and Leo. Waseni na wapiga tomo wapige tomo. Mnajua tomo ndomo. Tomo ndomo. Tomo ndomo. Oh yes. Oh yes.